a superb morning here uh, in sunny Cairns on a Monday uh, around 11 o'clock and uh, yeah great weather a bit of breeze but uh, but very pleasant to have a walk and I definitely need to get some uh, bread rolls from uh, the supermarket I've been, I've been feeling a bit seedy I have a bit of medication so sort of making me a bit nauseous so I hadn't actually been going out as much so I didn't pop out yesterday to do any shopping so I'll do it today and safe and of course uh, always is a bit further than uh, Coles but I definitely prefer it I think the quality of the food is much better uh, they generally make sure they stack the, the shelves and most of the most of the products are available whereas I find it's hit and miss with Coles and definitely the uh, the greens aren't as fresh and that's my perception anyway. uh, funny thing they say that the Americans have a different sense of humor to the Australians I think that must be the case because I uh, I actually posted a, net, a note on Tim, on Tim Pool's site saying you know how Tim, I told, said that Tim had eroded my, uh, my trust in the mainstream media and then I put an LOL at the end of it and I thought it was quite apparent that I was actually saying you know I obviously don't believe a damn thing that the mainstream media say but I got a couple of people replying and saying they couldn't believe I still actually had trust in it and I thought that wasn't what I said, it was the actual opposite, I had to tell them I was being sarcastic. So, uh, yeah, there's, I think if I did that, say, on Sky News Australia, on their website, I would, there'd be no ambiguity about it, they'd know that, you know, I'm being, I'm taking the piss, basically. But, uh, you know, that, that's, they can take things rather literally in the States, although I thought it was quite clear what the intent was. But, you know, different cultures, different ways of responding. God, that's a noisy truck up there. Oh, you get a lot of heavy traffic along this road. Main arterial road into town. Yep. You're gonna have to wait long to see a few more trucks coming down here. I suppose Monday's pretty busy too, a lot of deliveries. Uh, it's pretty quiet on a Sunday, of course, but yeah, no, it's, a, it's very pleasant. I'd say it's probably about 20 degrees with a light breeze. It's uh, really good for walking. Just saw a guy on an electric scooter on the opposite side of the road here uh, going at a decent clip towards the lights. Uh, couldn't see, unfortunately, with my eyes. I wasn't sure what it was. It was just a motorbike, but then he got closer and realised it was actually a scooter. So, yeah, you don't often see them riding on the roads, occasionally, but mainly and you don't see that many electric ones actually they, they think they were going to have a higher service for tourists but there's no point at the moment so anyway I'm holding up much better than the uh, and Saturday when I went out to shop I was feel, sweating like a pig when I got back it was really it was hard going for me but uh, today I'm feeling a lot better there's a constant breeze which helps too and it's a little cooler but earlier in the day I think it's the way to go even this time of year certainly essential in summer Ooh, that's brutal and uh, got a horrible feeling I'm going to be stuck here in summer I can't see much international travel happening until probably realistically maybe midway through next year I mean it's just crazy something I would never have anticipated but uh, I can't leave right now anyway I'm sort of tied down with medical crap so it works out well in that respect, but uh, you would love to be able to get back there, back to Vietnam during winter, which would be like January, February, March, It'd be really good. But no guarantees. They've actually had an increase in cases they, because of Da Nang, it's sort of put everything, thrown everything, uh, all their plans in array a bit because they're, they're worried about uh, having too many cases, although they're very, very light number very light this thing's almost impossible to control anyway i think uh, the only way you can control is you've got a vaccine which is no guarantee of that either so mind you if that happens i think you'll see uh, a pretty instant improvement in, in people's optimism about the economy and everything so it's a huge deal if they can come up with one it just had a bit of an altercation there in the mall not personally but i was watching it 
between a guy and some woman and uh, he's calling her an effing dog. So it was getting pretty nasty. Don't know what that was all about. Luckily that's a fairly rare thing, so. But, uh, yeah. Got no doubt in my mind that uh, groceries are going up in price every time I come to the, go to the supermarket. Those things are more expensive, so. Yeah, I think, the, I think the supermarkets are profiteering. We could really do with an alley up here, just as a bit of competition. But, uh, yeah, people's standard living in Australia is definitely dropping when the costs are going up like this. It's definitely having an effect. And, he, and hurting the most vulnerable, because you know, food is pretty basic. Food, shelter, two major food, shelter, clothing. They're the sort of the basics of life. And, uh, if food prices keep going up like this, and yet, yet they keep saying we've got deflation. Well, it doesn't feel that way for most people, I'm sure, so these statistics are a joke. But, uh, it's very busy. It's almost lunchtime, I guess. It's a bit diff different time of day. The lady at uh, Woolworths offered to, to pack my bag for me, but uh, I'm sort of a bit reticent to have that done. She did it, but she's loaded up my... Uh, my second bag was really heavy stuff after I specifically told her to put the heavy stuff into the other bag. So, and that's where I do it myself. Uh, I mean, like I say, I appreciate making the offer, but she's going to make my life harder because of it. It's just not worth it. So, uh, yeah, it weighs a ton. I don't know what the hell. She must have picked specifically, maybe she thought I meant that bag to put the heavy stuff in, but that was the opposite of what I was intending. So. As usual, communication is so vitally important in this world. I had some woman come up to me who was heading towards Chemist Warehouse, who uh, I think was begging or something or other. I couldn't understand what she was saying, to be quite frank, and I'm just not feeling 100%. And the last thing I want is to have some sort of a confrontation with a conveyancer or so, whatever. So, yeah, it's a pleasant day, but those sort of things you expect in the big city, you get a lot more of that in Melbourne, mind you. It was horrible there, especially around Spencer Street Station, or the old uh, Southern Cross Station, I should say, reverting to the old title. But yeah, that was pretty dodgy around there. Mind you, a few of the shoppers look pretty dodgy in the supermarket today, so who knows? Things are going to get more desperate before they get better. We're in for a very rough six months, I think. Although I heard some bullshit in the uh, in the uh, Cairns Post, and they're not bereft of BS being mainstream media, they were talking about how property prices were going really well in Cairns, and I just don't believe that because they derive a lot of their income from real estate agents, so of course they're going to boost up the uh, perception of the market. Just don't believe a word they say. And uh, Cairns, sorry, Tropic, sorry, Tropic Now has also gone off a bit was good but now they seem to have a lot of advertorials parading masquerading as articles they lost their main reporter and i think they're going downhill fast it's very sad to see i was hoping they'd get better but they've gone backwards if anything so that's not good for local journalism so very sad Um, Chicago has comes up with another shocker. We now have a uh, another politician there who feels as though they can basically give themselves a bit of notoriety by coming up with the brilliant plan of uh, banning the, the teaching of history in schools. Well, that's until uh, the school curriculum comes up with a version of history that suits this uh, particular politician's political agenda. I don't know what the American curriculum is like, but uh, you would presume that they, uh, they're following uh, what you'd expect, uh, which is, a, a, to a large extent, a white history thing. It's a white history thing because white, whites were in power for a large uh, slice of, of, of that time frame, in which case they were the months calling the shots. So, I mean, if, if events were, t were turning in certain ways, well, naturally, you'd expect that to occur. Um, you know, the the, uh, the robber barons, for instance, these huge uh, wealthy people like the Vandervelds and, uh, and the Rockefellers uh, in the late 19th century, 
um, they were calling the shots. You know, the plate they had monopoly over things like Standard Oil, over the railways, um, Dale Carnegie with steel, uh, J.P. Morgan with banking. You know, these people were, had incredible uh, 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 consolidation of power. Very similar to what we're finding now with Silicon Valley and the likes of Google, uh, Amazon, um, Facebook, Twitter, all these companies have got a lot, a lot of power. Probably don't have as quite as much wealth as, um, as the uh, robber barons. They really did uh, monopolize the, the wealth, but uh, that's a different. But anyway, this, so we've got this uh, Les Horn Four, who wants to obviously you know, make a name for himself by basically rewriting history and uh, making it more uh, palatable to, to his electors, who are obviously very left-wing. Um, I think this is really, really dangerous stuff. Um, anyone who wants to rewrite history is, is Orwellian, in my opinion. History is not perfect. There's no doubt that it's open to interpretation, and, and it is written to a large extent by the victors. That is true, especially ancient history, because... They're the ones who actually uh, proclaim their victories on um, on monuments and the like and gives historians something to go on. Uh, we've got more sources now as time's gone by. And of course, recent history, uh, we have uh, film, radio and other t forms of, of information. So it's become much easier to get a diversity of uh, opinions and more about working people. Because that's one of the hard things in ancient history is to find out what the average Joe was doing each day because it was written by uh, the elite classes. They were the ones who actually were the ones who were literate enough to, to make a record for a start. So, um, you know, history is dynamic to that degree and it does change and can be interpreted by all means. But if this sort of woke history takes over, it's going to basically take up space that was occupied by... Uh, the standard history, and it could be a situation that's been cited in this article that someone like Thomas Edison will be shoved down in the priority list uh, compared to someone who did something that was might have been what regarded as socially significant but hasn't actually necessarily improved a lot of all humanity. I mean, people like uh, your uh, Thomas Edison's and your Henry Ford's made a huge change in the way people lived, and the person who came up with uh, pol uh, plum plumbing into the home, you know, just basic things like that, sewage, things like that. You know, we have flush toilets. These are huge improvements in our, our quality of life. These are the types of things that will probably be discounted. Um, and, uh, and of course, when it comes to uh, colonisation, of course, whites will always be seen as the bad guys, and that will be overemphasized probably. And... Um, and then the, there'll be much more emphasis on the on the, the native populations, and uh, it'll probably promote what we've got in Australia, which is the black armband of history, which I think is very destructive and divisive, and is very much a left wing um, uh, agenda driven uh, version of history, which is not uh, what history was. I mean, they they they're, they're even you know dragging down the name of the cook was one of the most benign. Uh, explorers that that uh, of, the, of his period, it was a tough period and people were much harsher. But you compare it to the Spanish conquistadors, the guy was an angel. So um, you know, I just think it's really sad when when someone like that is being dragged in the mud simply to to fulfil a a left wing agenda that is conceived at universities. And the same things happening in the states. I mean, um, so. Yeah, you know, we're probably in a similar situation the states there, but of course they have that huge racial chick on their shoulder. That there's uh, a lot of um, obviously a lot of black um, officials that have been elected over there, and they are pandering to to a particular constituency uh, with this sort of a, a policy, which I think is very dangerous. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you think there's anything there of, uh, of use to you or entertainment or whatever. And uh, either give do that or give me a thumbs up or, or if you're feeling really energetic, do both. That'd be great. Uh, but uh, please don't ignore me. That's the worst thing you can do on YouTube is be ignored.